Now the Brigadier is a John Kennedy fly. Uh, as I say, this is a variant with the muddler head. Uh, it's, it's a great trout fly as much as it is a good sea trout fly and it'll even catch salmon. So it's a great fly and fished in the lochs mainly, but uh, quite happily it would fish uh, in a top dropper uh, in the river as well. So hook I'm using here, this is a, I'm just using these up. I have tied on them before and it adds to the colour of the fly. And this is a competition heavyweight in silver from Full and Mill. As you can see it's a it's a size 10. The thread I'm going to be using is the uni thread 80 in black. Now you be a muddler head you could easily use a 10 uh, sorry, a 6 uh, just if you feel a wee bit, it's a wee bit stronger, uh, especially with the muddler head. Sometimes it depends on the deer hair you have. If it's quite chuck, as we say, uh, a bit hard, it may be better with a stronger thread. So basically we run my thread down to in line with the barb of the hook. Now we tie in two crest feathers, these crest feathers here, these are golden pheasant crest now. I'm going to show you, the, this is the colour really. It's dyed sunburst, so it's slightly stronger in colour. So that you're looking for a tail length round about the shank, that in your finger and thumb, just catch it on the top. Now I usually do a single turn then come underneath and lift up, just using the, this to, to lock it in. Uh, I mean the tail doesn't have to be perfect but that's, that's to me that's fine as you can see. Uh, slightly off to the side so I'll go back just to correct that. So what you do is curve the feather, just bring it towards yourself because it was, was curving away. Get it to sit, come underneath, pull it on top. Another turn on top just to make sure it's not going to move. That's a bit better. There we go. So I'm going to trim this, the length of the body. I mean basically, there's a muddler head on here, so give your cell a good 3 mil anyway. 3 to 4 even if you want, depending on the size of the muddler head. Now the rib of the fly, I'm using a, a small uh, oval, oval silver tinsel. You catch this on the side, the length of the body. And then I'm just going to quickly run up tidying things. Now there's a body hackle and uh, the, it's, a, it's a throat or a, a neck feather from a peacock. Uh, it's going to be tied in so give yourself as I say plenty of room. Now I'm on the way down, not exactly at the tail at this point, I'm going to tie in some black seals for. Just going to catch it on. It's much easier to catch it further up. And then take the dub into the, the tail slightly and then work your way up. So if I usually dub it on, get it basically anchored so I turn there it's actually starting to catch the dubbing and then I can stretch it out, get it to start where I want and then start to work back up. You can put it as thick a body or as thin a body as you like, just wind it up to some sort of shape, taper. When you're happy with it then you can take away the excess. Now Length of the neck feathers are all over the place. I've got quite a short feather here I'm going to be tying in. So select one to suit yourself. Uh, as I say, this one is a standard sort of length, you'll get that nice flow. Uh, if you want it shorter, then obviously it's a smaller feather. So I'm going to tie the shorter one just to have a variety. Now I'm using a, the remains of a neck I've got. This is a claret uh, Chinese cock neck I have. Just taking a feather from it, which is broke off. Uh, it's just the cape dries over time. So what I've got here is the stem, just to take away the fluff. Wax your thread to give you the grip, catch this in. This is going to be the palmer, it's going to run down. Let's get your feather. It's slightly rolled on maybe a bit, but we can control it, so just bring it round. Get it so the face of the hack goes towards the eye. Do a turn or so at the top and then you can be as heavy or as light as you like. Now I'm looking around about four turns down the body to catch it in with the rib and the way up. So once you've done that you can take your hackle pliers away. Now you're going to rub the body around about four to five times. Just as you get to the top here just draw back the fibre, catch this in. 
Fetch a ribbon, sorry, and then secure it down. Again, just make sure there's a wee bit of wax on there. See how much room I have here? I've left plenty of room for the, the head. And then I'm just going to tidy this up. The end of the, the rib, I'm just going to fray it with my nail so it, it basically takes away the step or the cut and it tapers better, so it does. Makes it easier if you've got a nice boy, a nice layer of thread down. Tip of the hackle, we can then either cut away or break it off. Now at this point, we can rough up the body if you wish. I mean, you can put some Velcro through it, I mean, to get an idea. Just hold the tail and just brush out some of the dubbing. Which gives it a lot more depth. It just depends on the type of fly you want. If you want this to put in the surface, the muddlers you want it quite close, top dropper type fly, and you can want to gink it up a wee bit or put your floating on it. And there we are, so again, a wee bit of wax. You wind this feather on. So a nice blue, well marked. This you see it's a lovely colour. It's not a big feather. You don't get many turns, so take away the fluff. Then you want to reveal the tip of the feather, which is not much again. Just this here. We can catch this on. Two or three turns, we can fold it back. Two or three turns. Now you could leave that there, or you can trim it out, so I'm just going to take it away. I'm just going to use my hackle pliers to wind the hackle. I see you're only going to get a couple of tons, especially in these small feathers. And it's worth having different lengths, short, long, just use up your feathers. There we are, catch it in. I'm just going to fold it back because it's nice and thin. You can do that. If the, feather, if the stem's nice and thin, you can fold it back. Trim away the, the waist. See how the hackle's sitting, really nice. Lovely colour. This one's just as I say, the last one I tied. You can see it's much wee bit, not much longer. Uh, just slightly. And now you can put the muddler head on. As I say, I'm going to use, you could use uh, different colours, like natural, and you can use black. And this one I'm going to be using. So, what I'll probably have a couple black. Two claret and two natural, and that makes a nice combination that you can try. And anyway, so I'm going to catch these in. Just going to bring it straight out for the, the skin and then trim it. You want to trim it as close to the skin as you can. And then take away all this fluff and broken ends. I'm not going to stack this, I'm just going to put it on as is. Just make sure you wax your thread. Now, you can put it through a wee comb as well, it makes the difference if you do that, if there's any like fine fur, you know, I don't know if you can see it there, but there it's, just take that away, because that basically tangles up and stops the fibre rotating. You're looking for a length, again, it's, this is up to yourself, but you don't want to make it too long, that, that basically covers up the, the blue or the neck feather of the peacock, so I want it quite short. So half the length, say for instance, just sit it on the top, come round with two loose turns with your thread. Now I'm holding obviously the ends. Now slowly tighten up, you'll see it's starting to flare. Now there's a point where you need to let go and allow the fibre to rotate around the, around the hook. So at this point I let go and then I let it rotate and then keep winding through the deer here as tight as you can. Always keeping the thread tight, see where you are. Perfectly coming onto the eye, you see there's the eye there. I'm just going to put another turn through, another one helps, especially with the wax thread, it gives you plenty of grip, and then when you're happy, you can then just build the head up and then quick finish. Always keep my thread tight. Come in, trim out your thread. Now these cut ends, now we're going to trim it now. So 
So just use the tips of your, your fingers just to lightly bring this out all the way around. You'll see the collar you formed with the, the, the natural fibre tips, the tips of the, the deer hair. And it's not too long, it's within the body and it, it just balances it a wee bit better. And then we've got a curved pair of scissors. So now what I'm trying to do here is just straight up and down. Curved pair of scissors, these are small curved pair of scissors. And we use the angle of the, depending on how big a head you want. You're not going to get a right dense head with the weight and method I use there. But it's enough for this fly. That's perfect for this fly. Uh, the way I like it anyway. So I'm going to use the curve of the scissors to form the shape. Now that's, you've got to be brave when you're trimming. And you've got to know when to stop. And sometimes it's quite hard. So basically we come in. Get a nice cut. That first cut this is basically your, your best one. <laughs> and then rotate if you can your vice. All the way around. This is not, you're not going to get a perfect muddler head with this. It's just enough to lift the fly. So when you put this on the top dropper, it, it causes enough disturbance. It just lifts the pattern a wee bit higher in the water. Now all I'm doing is dating, just looking for any broken or cut ends. At this point just tidy the things up. Now this is where I you have to know when to, you have to stop at a point. Now we quite look round. It looks not too bad. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the heat of the hairdryer just to tighten the deer hair out. It will tighten it up. You'll see some people using a flame to tighten deer hair up or square up the ends. I don't want to set my flying fire, uh, so <laughs> I'd rather use a hairdryer. The hairdryer will still work. So I've got the old hairdryer here, you can see it. I'm just going to blow it through the fly and then just bring your fingers through it. You feel it tightening up. And there we are. That's, it just tightens it up a wee bit, you'll feel it. And uh, I would basically stop at that. I would just, there's a couple of fibres at the top I can see, I can take away. There's a broken one here, I can just take that out. As I say, you can get, get around to suit yourself, but don't take any more than that off. And there we are. Then, and don't be shy, get the varnish and basically dab it into the front of the, the head here, make sure, and it soaks slightly in at the roots of the deer hair, just at that point. And that helps to tighten up as well, once that dries, it lasts longer a wee bit. Uh, but, here we are. You can then clean the eye out. Use my dub and needle to do that. And there we go. And that's basically the Brigadier. It's, it's a Brigadier, uh, John Kennedy's fly, uh, but with a muddler head. And I say, what I'll do is I'll do a couple of black head. I mean, you can see the difference slightly with the black, it changes the look. And then I'll tie two black, two claret, and two with a natural head just to have a selection. And uh, such a good fly, it's worth doing stuff like that. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, there is a good tie-in on YouTube, but it's just the Brigadier itself. You'll find it if you type in the Brigadier, uh, you should be able to find it on YouTube. So anyway, there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that. And again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, if you haven't, please subscribe, it, it does help. And thank you for watching.